Hello everyone and welcome to the next OpenAL tutorial. This is video 3. This one is sort of going to be a primer for the rest of what's to come because all the cool stuff is about to happen. But before we can do all the cool stuff, there's a bit of legwork in getting the sounds playing in a looping fashion and in a way where we can play around with their distance and also their direction. So this episode's more about how to set it up to uh, start playing around with all the distance and stuff. So I'm just going to show you all the changes that will be in the code as of today when you see this uploaded or whatnot. I'll put a link down below to the code so you can check it out and there will be a tag, a video 3 tag, if you're watching this from the future. Okay, so the first thing we wanted to do, the main thing we wanted to do, is we wanted to start getting a loop. So I have included just a little bit of a uh, code I wrote called a main loop. And it's actually in a whole other repo. So I'll just show you that real quick. It's pretty straightforward. It's uh, I call it main loop. It's a single header. And really all it does is it's just this one little class here that allows us to add things to a loop and then press run. And it'll loop until our run condition is met or fails rather in this case. So we're going to have ways to do things on every update and on delayed updates should we choose to if we don't want it to happen super quick. And we have some other functions just to support. So I just added this in with git submodules. So you'll see over here in the changes that are ready to be staged and committed that the main loop submodule is added. And the only thing I'm using from that is the main loop.h is right there. So this whole chunk of code is now in here. It's about 200 lines, but it's great for starting out with a game or something because it's a nice way to kind of control your program. So I put that in there, that way we could start messing with that. We're also going to be uh, using the Windows header for keyboard presses. This of course will be a little different on Linux or Mac. You can adjust, you could add whatever it is for Linux and Mac instead if you're using that. But essentially the only thing we're using here is uh, get key state. And that way we can just have some keyboard presses. So on the on our updates, which runs every as frequently as it can basically, we're gonna check for an A key press to play that heel sound. And if the heel is already currently playing, we're gonna play the fail spell sound. So that way it's going to give you like that you're already casting type sound. Sort of akin to what World of Warcraft does when you try to press the same spell and you're already casting. So I kind of put that in there with the heal. But let's start, start from the top here. So I am declaring a boolean. I guess I could have this as a static right inside the main. I just want to do it before we set this run condition. And it does need to be static if it's inside the main, the main because you populate this main loop with lambdas. That's just the way it works. So if you're not super familiar with lambdas, I'll put a link to a lambdas video I did a while ago that covers pretty much everything about them. But the basic syntax is these brackets and then the curly brackets with your code. And uh, yeah, check that video out if you're completely new two lambdas it should fill you in pretty good. I changed some of these file names. The sound source is now called sound effect player and uh, the other one was named is now named sound effects library because it is essentially a library of sounds. I think it was called sound buffer before. It still is sort of the sound buffer but it's just a library of everything you've loaded. So basically all you do with this is load or unload and there's some notes here in case you're not sure what to do. You basically get an ID back for the loaded ones and you can either unload with that ID or use it on the player to play. So this just helps handle those and load or unload them because say you're going in between levels or something and you want to unload a bunch of sounds you'll never use again and you want to load up new ones. This little library allows you to do stuff like that. So it just gives you some control over what's in memory. And our sound effects player has been, we've made it a little, little bit more robust. Before it only had play, 
Now we also have stop, pause, and resume, which we're not going to use yet, but they are already built. And we also have a way to just change the buffer to play other than just hitting play, because before you would just have to pass a different one. But the thing is, if you're trying to pass it a different one while it was playing, it'll throw an error. So you don't want to do that. And we have a way to control whether it's looping or not. If it's looping, it'll just continue to play until you stop it. And we just have a boolean to check if it is playing, so we can call this anytime we need to check or any of our logic. And is playing just gets the state and returns whether the state is playing. So it'll return true if it's playing. Music buffer is still about the same, but I did add a few things. You can now pause, stop, and resume the play. So before we only had play and update buffers, buffer stream. And we can also check if it's playing. It's the same as the sound effect one. And the sound device, we added a few things here too. Basically, we added the listener. I just put these defines at the top to make it easier than, so you don't have to call the sound device.get all the time, or don't have to type all that out. You can just type in listener in our main, for example. And I did the same thing with these loads you might have noticed on the sound effects library. There's just a defined sound effect load. So rather than having to type in all this, the programmer can just type in this. And I, I like doing that. It's just a personal preference, really. So anyway, back to our sound device. I added some some ways to start setting the location, orientation, and the master volume or the gain. So since this is the sound device basically functions as your listener too. When you initiate a new initialize a new sound device, you also get a listener. And that's basically what hears all the sounds or what comes out of your speakers or your headphones. So being that this is moving towards 3D sound. We need a way to move around in the world and orientate in the world. So that's why we have set location and set orientation. There's some others I haven't added in here too that OpenAL has. Like, uh, we're going to have set velocity. But uh, yeah, we're going to need functions to change all of that on the fly. And we will get to that later. That'll probably be like five or six other core things to mention. The way I'm doing this, the music is really only made to be played stereo both headphones, left and right stereo sound. It's not made to be positioned. We could, but we'd have to make sure we have mono sources, and then we'd have to put in all the location stuff in this class. I'm not gonna be doing that for music because in general, I think when music's playing, you probably want it to just be in your headphones and you control the level manually, like in the settings. So I'm not gonna be doing positional stuff with the music, although we could. We're only going to be doing it with the sound effects. So in here, I am going to have basically the same thing that this listener has. We're going to have location, orientation, and gain, and uh, velocity and speed as well. And I think there's one other thing I can't think of. Um, velocity and speed might be the same thing. Anyway, someone will correct me in the comments, I'm sure. So just to give you a little diagram real quick of so basically you have like a cone. So that's like the area you hear from, but by default it's 360. So if you don't change anything, you hear in all directions and other sounds. So these sound effects, they also have a position and based on how far away you are, it changes. So there's some tuning in this open AL programmers guide. You'll see once we start setting up distance models, there's some different ones you can you can do. The default one is uh, this AL inverse distance clamped, and it seems to be like the industry standard one for sound distance. But depending on how like you're programming your game, uh, you might be doing your measurements different. So you do have to play around with this a little bit. We're going to try to keep it real simple in this particular tutorial. But know that in this main OpenAL programmer's guide from their website, they tell you all about it. Uh, but we're probably just going to stick with the inverse distance clamped. In our case, we might play around with the others later. And also, these sounds emit in a certain direction too. So by default, they emit 360. 
but you can make them, you can change them to just a cone. So you can have sounds that only emit sound in a certain direction. Okay, so let's go through this, give it a little demo, and uh, we'll be prepared for next video. So we load up our sounds. We load up the spell sound, we load up the fail sound, we have a player for them as well. And we load up some music to have that ready. So with this main loop, we want to set a run condition. We basically want to return this keep running variable, which is going to be true. So we can have somewhere else in our logic something that sets it to false, and that'll exit the game. Add to on begin. I don't have anything in here right now, so I'm not doing any special anything special on begin. I could do something like put a C out that says like starting, but we're just gonna leave it blank. Might even just delete it because we're not using it. Okay, so this add to on update is the main thing. This is just something we're adding to every update loop. And since we're passing it a flute a float a flute. <laughs> um it's the delta time. If you look at the uh, add to on update, there's two versions of it. There's one that takes a float, and that is the delta time, which you can see here. So it just runs through all those and gives it the elapsed time if you're doing one of the float ones. So it's just all programmed to have the time ready, which is why I included it. It just makes it easier, easier than typing it all out again. So we're getting the delta time every time, and the reason for that is because we're putting a cooldown on these sounds. Uh, the heal sound has a three second cooldown, so if you you can't spam it. If you could spam it, it'll just make like a crazy sounding noise of it beginning a million times a second. And same with this fail one, so we put a little bit of a cooldown on that as well. Of uh, 0.8 seconds seemed pretty good, and heal having a three second seemed pretty good. And we also have some music controls here. Uh, we can start the music by hitting P. And that's about all I put. I could add some stuff to stop it and pause it. And now another important thing with the music playing is we need to add to an update the update buffer stream for the music. Otherwise, it's only going to play the first split second of it from buffering. So I put in here on delayed update and the default delay is a tenth of a second. So this will run every tenth of a second. If the music is playing, we'll update the buffer stream. So as soon as you pause it or stop it or something, it'll stop updating the buffer stream. And then the last thing we do is we just call run on this main loop and it'll start running all these functions in a loop. All right, so let's go ahead and, and give it a go. Okay, looks good, it is currently running. If I press A, I should get the heal sound. Press it before it's ready again. It gives the fail sound. So if I just spam it, uh, you can't yet. So you have to wait. All right, and then if I press P, it begins. And it's buffering. It's going through that update and buffering. And it's just going to continue because I don't have a way to stop it. And you might have noticed I didn't program any way to quit in here. So I could just put something in here like I might as well. If uh, get key state Q check for this most significant bit and we'll just say keep running to false so now if I stop and rebuild this I can quit with the Q key so that way we have a way to actually exit the program rather than it just running endlessly okay so now if I press Q it quits because it'll exit the loop and get to the end of the program so I'm gonna get rid of all this old code don't need it anymore. And in fact, this main loop actually returns an integer of whether it was successful or not, or if it had an error. So we can actually just return it in our case here since we're not doing anything else. 
And that's going to do it for this episode and this preparation. So next episode, we are going to get into moving these sounds around and playing with some positions. Now that we have it all in a loop, we should be able to get a little main guy of some sort that moves around and some sounds that can be in different positions. I might even get a little bit of OpenGL in here just for some visuals, but it should be lots of fun. So thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this was helpful and I guess I'll see you in the next one. Peace out guys. Thank you.